Section 1. You will hear a male student talking to a union representative about placing an advertisement to sell a laptop. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, I'm Debbie. How can I help? Hi, my name's David. I'm just looking to place an advertisement on the main union notice board to sell a laptop and a few accessories if that's possible. The answer is advertisement. So, advertisement has been written in the space. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi, I'm Debbie. How can I help? Hi, my name's David. I'm just looking to place an advertisement on the main union notice board to sell a laptop and a few accessories if that's possible. Sure, that's not a problem. I take it you are a member of the Students' Union? Yes, I am. Right then. I'll just get a form up. And as there is no one around, and it looks as if it's going to be quiet for a while, I'll just type the details straight into the computer for you. Thanks very much. No problem. Shall we just title it Laptop for Sale? Yeah, OK. Can you describe it generally? Well, it's in very good condition. In fact, it's hardly been used. Why are you selling it, if I may ask? Well, I've got another one which is much lighter and I don't really need two. I see. What weight is the one you're selling? It's uh, 3.5 kilograms. That is heavy these days. Can you give more details about the one you want to sell? Right. Uh, well, it's an Allegro and it's got all the latest programs. OK. What about the memory? The memory is only 0.5 gigabytes. And what about the screen size and the other features? Oh, well, uh, the, uh, the screen is, well, let's see, it's 37.5 uh, centimetres with a, a standard size keyboard and a touchpad. But I've got a cordless mouse that I can put in with it if necessary. Well, some people don't like using a touchpad. What about ports or holes for attaching things to the laptop? It's got two ports. Mm. More modern laptops have more than two ports for all the extra attachments. They do. Uh, let's see, uh, what else is important? Uh, oh yeah, the, uh, the battery lasts for two and a half hours, which is OK, but not enough for long train journeys. Uh, but one thing is that it's not wireless. Right, OK, not wireless. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Anything else I can put on the advertisement? There's a webcam built at the top of the screen and uh, I can throw in a printer, a scanner and headphones, which I, I got with it in a special deal. It also comes with its own case for carrying it around. Uh, actually, the case is quite smart. I'm hoping these things will help it sell. They should do. Right, I think I've got all that. How much do you want for it? That, I'm not sure about. Uh, it's worth about £900 to £1,000 new. Yeah, but you won't get that much if it's used, and even if it's in good condition. What about £500? I doubt if you'd get as much as that. More like £200 or £300. 
If you look at the notice board, there is one on there which is comparable to yours, and it's not more than about £250, I think. As little as that? I'm afraid so. Shall we say £300? OK, put that. Can I take some contact details for the advert? The name's David Bristow. B R I S T O W. Yes, that's it. And uh, a mobile or email? Both, if you want. It's D I B underscore 7791 at hotmail.com. OK, and the mobile? Uh, that's 09. 09- Eight seven five four two three three eight seven. That's it. If you send the picture, I'll add it and print it out and stick it up for you. OK, I can get that to you today. Right. I'll type in here, advert placed the 22nd of October. Fine. And good luck with the sale. Thanks. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2 on page 10. Section 2. You will hear a talk on New Zealand radio about an art sale which is being held to raise money for charity. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 13 on page 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 13. One of the most anticipated art events in Christchurch is the Charity Art Sale, organised this year by Neil Curtis. Neil, tell us all about it. Well, Diane, this looks like being the biggest art sale yet. And the best thing about it is that the money raised will all go to charity. So what you probably want to know first is where it is. Well, the pictures will be on view all this week, most of them at the Star Gallery in the shopping mall. But we have so many pictures this year that we're also showing some in the cafe next door. So do drop in and see them any day between 9 and 5. Now, if you're interested in buying rather than just looking, and we hope a lot of you will be, the actual sale will take place on Thursday evening, with sales starting at 730 Refreshments will be available before the sale, starting at 6.30. We've got about 50 works by local artists showing a huge range of styles and media, and in a minute I'll tell you about some of them. You're probably also interested in what's going to happen to your money once you've handed it over. Well, all proceeds will go to support children who are disabled, both here in New Zealand and also in other countries so you can find an original painting, support local talent and help these children all at the same time. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 14 to 20 on page 11. Now listen and answer questions 14 to 20.
Now, let me tell you a bit about some of the artists who have kindly agreed to donate their pictures to the charity art sale. One of them is Don Studley, who has a special interest in the art sale because his five-year-old daughter was born with a serious back problem. After an operation earlier this year, she's now doing fine, but Don says he wants to offer something to help other less fortunate children. Don is totally self-taught and says he's passionate about painting. His paintings depict some of our New Zealand birds in their natural habitats. One relative newcomer to New Zealand is James Chang, who came here from Taiwan nine years ago at the age of 56. Mr Chang had 13 exhibitions in Taiwan before he came to live here in Christchurch, so he's a well-established artist and art has been a lifelong passion for him. His paintings are certainly worth looking at. If you like abstract pictures with strong colour schemes, you'll love them. Natalie Stevens was born in New Zealand, but is exhibited in China, Australia and Spain. As well as being an artist, she's a website designer. She believes art should be universal, and her paintings use soft colours and a mixture of media. Most of her pictures are portraits, so watch out. Some of them may even be friends of yours. And then we have Christine Shin from Korea. Christine only started to learn English two years ago when she arrived in New Zealand, but she's been painting professionally for over ten years, and she sure knows how to communicate strong messages through the universal language of art. She usually works from photographs and paints delicate watercolours, which combine traditional Asian influences with New Zealand landscapes, giving a very special view of our local scenery. Well, that's all I have time to tell you now, but as well as these four, there are many other artists whose work will be on sale, so do come along on Thursday. We accept cheques, credit cards or cash. And remember, even if you don't buy a picture, you can always make a donation. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Test 1, Section 3. You will hear two students, Jenna and Marco, discussing a business studies project they have to do. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 21 to 24. Come on, Marco. We've got to get on and sort out this project for Professor Buckley. Hang on. I want to make sure we've got all the information. Now, where are we? Well, today we need to sort out exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to divide the work up. OK. How long have we got, by the way? Um, the end of term is April 6th. And he said to hand it in on week 8, so that's March 25th at the latest, because the beginning of that week is the 21st, mm. so not long. Right. Have you got the notes there? Yes. He wants us to do a fairly small-scale study, like the last one, on whether or not businesses were offering more benefits to staff. Mm. And we've now got to look at the rise in older workers. It should be fairly straightforward. Yeah, as long as we keep it small. Mm. Who's marking it? I don't know. Sometimes he gets the PhD students to mark it for him. Oh, actually, it just says here, a senior lecturer. Mm. I suppose it's too much for Professor Barclay to do them all. Yeah. 
Anyway, how are we going to go about this? Well, we have to decide how big we want it to be and who... Yeah, we... but I think we must sort out a timetable for the project. Otherwise, nothing will get done. Okay. Uh, do you want to do that? All right. I'll do it as soon as we finish here. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 25 to 27. OK, what do we have to do now for the project? What's the best way to go about it? Um, well, Professor Carter suggested we set up a focus group to get some in-depth interviews, but I think that'll take a lot of time. Yeah, I agree. If we did a focus group, we'd have to spend time deciding who to include in it, and it's not necessary to do one anyway. Oh, fine. And if you agree, I think we should get in touch with the businesses on the list Professor Carter gave us and ask them if they're prepared to participate. Sounds good. Uh, then we can go there, give them questionnaires and collect them later. Exactly. OK. Uh, then do we need to book one of those study rooms in the library so we can work together to input the data? Perhaps not, as I guess just one of us could just sort it out, actually. Yes, that would be easier. A lot of what we're doing is qualitative, so it'll be writing up rather than statistics. No software for that, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it would look better if we had actual shots of some of the staff, because we're citing appearance as a factor in employability, aren't we? Yeah, OK. I'll factor that all in when I sort everything out tonight. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 28 to 30. I'm glad we decided to work together. I think it's going to work out well. Yes, well, given that we had to work in pairs on this project, I think we were right to choose each other. Hmm. We complement each other academically, as we're each good at what the other isn't. <laughs> in fact, we should have tried working together before. <laughs> yes. Now, how shall we split the work? I'll do the analysis, shall I? Oh, OK. It's just that it might be faster, because I'm used to doing it. Although your English is better than mine. I need more practice at reading, really. OK, I'll do the presentation then, if that's OK with you. Yeah, sure. I don't mind speaking in public, but I hate preparing all the notes for them. The thing is, the tutor said one person should do the whole presentation, and he said he expects me to do it because I haven't done one yet. No, that's fine. Now, let's see. Now, turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk given by Dr Miranda James. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 35. Now, listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 35. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first in a series of talks we have arranged for the Overseas Students Association this semester. 
Dr. James has very kindly agreed to speak to us today on the topic of public speaking, and judging from the large numbers of you here, it's clearly a subject of great interest and relevance. Dr. James. Hello. It's good to see so many of you here, and hopefully, what I'm going to tell you will be useful to you both here at the university and in your future employment. Many people avoid speaking publicly, by which I mean in front of, say, ten or more people, not because they lack the ability, but mainly because they lack confidence. Which is really only due to lack of practice. Today, as a consequence of the influence of television, audiences expect speakers to be relatively brief and to the point, in addition to being well informed and interesting or entertaining. Probably the most important part of public speaking is what you do beforehand. By which I mean preparation. This includes practical details, such as knowing precisely what your topic is, and exactly how long you are expected to talk for. You should also plan the content thoroughly. A good strategy is to write out the content as you intend to say it, and then make brief notes. Preferably on small cards, which you use to talk from. This way, you sound more natural. You incorporate pauses while you look at your notes, and you can then look at your audience while you are speaking. Never read your speech without looking at the audience. Eye contact is a very important part of communicating with an audience. So deliberately move your head and look around at your audience. Pauses are important, as most people, when they are nervous, tend to rush through their speech. Now you have some time to look at questions thirty-six to forty. Now listen and answer questions thirty-six to forty. Practice speaking slowly. This gives you more time to pronounce your words correctly. It's always easier for your audience to listen to someone whose speaking is clear and calmly paced, so that they can understand the ideas being explained. And the bigger the group. The more slowly you should speak. Remember to project your voice, speaking clearly to the person furthest away from you. It's a good idea to rehearse and record yourself. Pay attention to your intonation when you listen to yourself. It's even harder if you're speaking in a second language. I would imagine. But there's nothing worse than listening to a flat, monotonous voice. So try to vary your tone and rhythm. This will add meaning to your words. Lastly, pay attention to both your posture and your gestures. A confident person stands, or sits in a small group, with their head up, chin out, and shoulders back. Try to avoid scratching or fiddling with your hair or beard, or pens, jewelry, and so on. These movements can distract and irritate your audience. Yet you may be unaware of them yourself. Another reason for rehearsing, preferably with feedback from a friend, or better still, on video. I hope these few tips will make your experience of speaking in public. A little easier. Remember, practice makes perfect. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute.